Senator Graham. Uh, thank you, uh, Director Ray. I'm going to try to look forward, then we'll talk a little bit about January the 6th. Uh, do you think the National Guard presence at the Capitol at the level we have today should continue? If so, for how long? You know, um, Senator, I'm not sure that I'm really the best equipped to evaluate the National Guard presence. Okay, um, fair enough, fair enough. Um, uh, you are the best equipped to talk about the capability of the FBI. Um, do you have enough people and resources to deal with all the threats we've been talking about this morning? <laughs> well, uh, needless to say, Senator, I, I welcome and appreciate the question. Um, everywhere I go, someone has really good ideas about things they think the FBI should be doing more of. Uh, but I have not found very many people with great ideas, or at least responsible ideas, of things the FBI could be doing less of. And so our folks are, are busting their you-know-whats yeah, to try to deal with all these threats. Uh, we, we need more agents. We need more analysts. We okay, need well, more let, data analytics, just, et cetera. Let's just, let's just stop there because <clears throat> we need to learn as much as we can from January the 6th. This is the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Are you concerned about international terrorists paying us a visit? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Are you concerned about the interaction between international terrorists and domestic terrorists? That's a growing phenomenon, certainly something we're watching with concern. One of my great concerns was that as people flowed into the Capitol with backpacks on, you had no idea who, who they were and what they were carrying. So it had been very easy for some international terrorist group to infiltrate this crowd. Do you agree with that? I do think it would have been easy for that to happen. Uh, I, know that, I don't know that we've seen evidence that it did happen, but that's certainly one of the specific things we're looking for. After the attack, don't you think international groups are seeing this as a vulnerability in our system? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Uh, international terrorist groups may have found a way to get closer to the capital by integrating themselves into domestic political movements. Well, certainly we think the events on January 6th have been, a, at a minimum, an inspiration to a number of, of terrorist um, uh, extremists so, out there and may, may even yeah. have been worse than that. So here's my challenge to you. Sit down and put pen to paper and in the uh, think big, not small. What do you need that you don't have in terms of agents and resources and put it to paper I'm on the Appropriations Committee with Senator Durbin. Many of us here are. I think we've got an opportunity here to plus you up. Is it fair to say that since 9-11, domestic terrorism has exploded as a threat? Well, it's certainly grown dramatically. Okay, uh, drawn, uh, grown dramatically, which takes resources to combat. Is that correct? Yes. Has the FBI drawn, uh, grown dramatically since 9-11? Uh, not as dramatically as the threat. Okay, so what I want, I want you to do is take the number of agents and resources you had on 9-11 and tell us where you're at today and make sure that we understand that the threats you're facing are much greater than they were 20 years ago and challenge us to give you the resources uh, to meet those threats. Uh, back to January the 6th. Is it fair to say as director of the FBI you were not informed of the raw intelligence coming from the Norfolk office, is that correct? And not before January 6th. Okay. So this was an internet posting that somebody captured? My understanding is that this was uh, information posted online uh, under a moniker or a, a pseudonym. Uh, it was unvetted, uncorroborated information, but it was, uh, and it was somewhat aspirational in nature, but it was concerning, it was concerning and was specific enough that we, That's, our folks in Norfolk, thought the need to get it out even if we hadn't had a chance to, to corroborate or vet it. Okay, looking back, what would you have done differently with this information? Because this is a hard one. You get something on the internet that's concerning. You don't know if it's true or not. You capture it. What are the lessons learned in terms of how we could have acted better on that information? I think we're. I mean, I, the truthful answer is we're still looking at that. You know, this was. Yeah. We, you know, I look at intelligence both collection, analysis, dissemination. Uh, we need to get better at collecting, obviously, but. The key part here was we often don't have the luxury of time right. to analyze this information before it gets disseminated. And in this instance, our folks 
uh, in Norfolk and Washington Field made the judgment that, and I think it was a reasonable judgment, to get the information, like I said, in three different ways to their partners, even though, Let, even though they didn't know whether right. it was going to turn out to Let, be let's accurate. Let's play that out a bit. Let's say it made it up to the top levels of the Capitol Police intelligence units to the head of the Capitol Police Force. Given that raw intelligence, what would you expect them to have done differently? You know, I, I really want to be careful not to be an armchair quarterback See, here. See, that's the problem, because I don't know how to answer that question myself. Because you can capture stuff today that will may foretell an attack tomorrow, but how much... This is a problem. I just don't want people to run down the road, hey, there's an intel screenshot. I mean, there's a screenshot on some computer somewhere. We need to turn the whole government upside down. It's just a, 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 a tough situation. Uh, is the Proud Boys, are they a domestic terrorist group? Uh, well, I don't think we have treated the Proud Boys itself as a domestic terrorism group, but we certainly have individuals. What does it take to make the list? Well, there is, uh, uh, as you may know, uh, Senator, uh, under federal law, under U.S. law, there is no uh, list of domestic terrorism organizations the same way there is for foreign terrorist organizations. Well, let's, let's th think about that in the next 47 seconds. <clears throat> Oath Keepers, are, are they a domestic terrorist organization? We ha again, as with Proud Boys, we have individuals who associate yeah. themselves with that Was group Antifa who are domestic a terrorist. domestic terrorist organization. Same thing, same answer. Same answer. So why don't we think about how to gather better information and expose some of these groups? If they were on a list, would it make it easier for you? Uh, I think the issue of whether or not to designate or, or have a formal mechanism for designating domestic terror uh, groups uh, in the same way we do with, say, Al-Qaeda or ISIS, I think th uh, there's reasonable debate about whether or not it would really the, advance is the KKK the KKK a domestic terrorist group? Well, th there is no uh, okay. legal designation for that, domestic that, terrorist My group. point is, I don't know if we should have one or not, but I think it's time to think about it. Thank you, Senator Graham.